he's been married four times now, and this wedding will be his fifth in the span of 30 years. I don't know how he has such a high turnover rate, but I'm guessing it's to do with him being both rich and a raging narcissist. He invited me to get coffee and introduced me to his new fiance. I knew he was going to do this because two of my brothers, there are seven of us total, none have the same mother, said that they had just gotten coffee with dad and met the fiance, then been invited to the wedding, and both had been given A plus one for their girlfriends of eight and 10 months respectively. Dad told me to bring my partner when I came for coffee and I brought my, trans, boyfriend along. We have been together for three years. The fiancé seemed nice, wanting to know about me and my boyfriend and asking questions that sounded like she actually gave a crap. Dad gets all the details of the engagement, wedding out of the way and then asks me, and only me, if I'll be there. I noticed that he was talking to just me, not my boyfriend, so I say we will check if we're free. Dad replies that this is family only. I reply, I just assumed, seeing as how the other siblings got plus ones. Dad says that's different. Are you coming? I say we'll catch the next one. Dad's fiancé becomes visibly upset and they leave. Dad texts me after that if I can be civil on the day that I can still come alone. I felt like I had to stick up for my boyfriend because this was definitely due to him being transgender, and he thanked me at the time but told me that I should probably still go, but after reporting back to my siblings to say what had happened I got mixed responses. The overall opinion was that while I absolutely should stick up for my boyfriend this was some hill to die on and I managed to catch the actually nice fiancé in the crossfire and upset dad, too. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, I think it was the best thing you could have done in the situation, especially with the way your dad is. It's a shame that his fiancé may have gotten her feelings hurt, but she'll have bigger problems to worry about in a few months when she's sorting through a divorce. I'm sorry that your dad can't be more accepting. Not the idiot because he invited your partner to coffee to make sure to avoid inviting both of you to the wedding. If he had invited you alone or spoken to you privately first, you could have discussed it without hurting anyone's feelings. Honestly, I thought it was clever even if it was mean. His new fiancé can't be that offended when she's number 8 at a minimum for marriage and her children. I get it if she's number 2 or possibly even 3, but maybe she needed this wake up to reality. Everyone's the idiot here. You were absolutely right to defend your boyfriend, but it was crappy of you to insult the nice fiancé by implying that she was a temporary partner and her marriage is doomed. It might be true, but like an ugly birthmark or a bald patch shaped like a thing, you're an idiot if you snarkily point it out, you can defend your boyfriend without putting someone else down. My 23 sister 26 recently got married to one of those it's just a prank, bro. Guys. The guy is hysterical. He laughs at any and everything that he lays eyes on. He jokes, teases, makes fun and pulls very very nasty and cruel pranks all the time. It's like he has no filter. Some said he's mentally ill especially after he started telling jokes at his own father's funeral and almost caused my sister to get injured from his count the stairs prank. Me and the family got our fair share of his ridiculous pranking campaign and we've had enough but to him it's not enough apparently. The kids love him and say he's fun so that's one positive thing about him. The wedding was days ago. Once he learned I was bringing my girlfriend who he teased, pranked couple of times he started making comments about pulling some funny pranks at the wedding. I told him I won't react well and he can do with this info what he will. He just laughed me off ha 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 type of laugh then I didn't see him till the wedding. After the ceremony and while the guests were eating. He saw me and my girlfriend standing talking to several guests and mutual friends and he approached us with a glass of milk in his hand, no idea why he had it, and kept commenting on me and my girlfriend. He invited me to propose to her right then so the memory of my proposal will always be overshadowed by his wedding. Then said relax, just a joke bro, then laughed. My girlfriend was standing next to me in her $320 dress when my brother-in-law pointed to the left and shouted look. There's a dog over there. Me, my girlfriend looked to the left and next thing I knew he threw milk from his glass on her dress, it was a blue dress. My girlfriend was so shocked she froze. He started laughing saying gotcha I was stunned then I asked the hell he did that for. I lashed out at him as my girlfriend rushed to clean up and I called him obnoxious and mean because he shouldn't have done that. He said he was just messing with us and my girlfriend should feel lucky for being served milk at a wedding but my girlfriend was being too uptight and couldn't take a joke. She left looking angry and didn't respond to my calls. I was livid. 
After my argument with my brother-in-law I left. The next day I called him and my sister about what happened and told them I'm expecting him to pay $320 for the dress he ruined. He threw a fit saying it was just a prank and my sister said milk doesn't ruin a dress and said an apology should do it but I said no and demanded he pay $320 after humiliating and getting my girlfriend wet and messy. My sister argued saying I'm being overprotective of my girlfriend but I hung up telling them they had till Friday. Am I the idiot? ETA My girlfriend doesn't work her parents paid for her dress and so they're equally upset as her if not more. My sister said my girlfriend and her parents shouldn't be spending that much on a dress if they can't handle the possibility of it being ruined by any chance. ETA 2. My girlfriend is 20 years old. I offered to get the dress clean but she said she no longer wants it due to the bad memory attached to it since she wore it for the first time that day. She suffers from anxiety and depression, so I get why she no longer feels comfortable keeping it. Not the idiot. This guy is obnoxiously toxic. Get your receipts in order, if he doesn't pay for a replacement send him to small claims. I have no idea why everyone puts up with this guy's behavior, but he needs to start taking responsibility for his terror, these are not pranks. I'd also recommend going LC or NC after this. What was your sister thinking marrying this guy? He's not a prankster, he's an inconsiderate, immature idiot. He thought it would be funny to throw milk on someone's dress? Maybe someone should throw damaging liquids on his clothing and tell him that it's just a prank. Even if the dress can be repaired, your girlfriend had to stand around in a wet and messy dress. Requiring him to pay the $320 for damaging the dress is a way of punishing him for his wrongdoing. And so what if you are protective of your girlfriend? That's a good thing. You don't want her to be humiliated or hurt, which is the sign of a good boyfriend. Not the idiot. I just came here to say not the idiot and you're the kind of boyfriend I'd want ha ha is your girlfriend okay? Does she understand what lengths you've gone to in order to make your bill pay for his actions? She did better than I would have because I honestly wouldn't be able to hold it together and would have cried right there on the spot but seriously like I said not the idiot and let's hope they don't plan for kids because that'll just be a whole new set of problems with a whole new set of possibilities. I, 28, have been a single dad to two kids six and four, for the last two years. My ex-GF, Kate, 27, is the mother of my children but has not been present in their lives for the last two years. She spent the last two years in either jail or rehab due to her meds addiction. When Kate and I started dating I knew she used but I was young and dumb and in love and didn't use my best judgment. She got pregnant young and to her credit she stopped using completely and was a doting, loving mother. After she got pregnant with our second, we got engaged and were planning a wedding for a year after the birth. But after the birth of our daughter everything changed. For the first six months or so things were good and we were a happy family. But then Kate started going out with old friends, telling me she felt like she was losing who she was and needed to realize that she was also an independent person and not just a mother. I agreed that she needed to socialize and have a life outside of our family but I was wary about the people she was hanging around with and expressed my concern to her. She assured me that she had put that part of her life behind her and she just wanted to be around friends again. Well, Kate started using again and got herself put in jail. She got out and went to rehab, but relapsed shortly after and went to jail again, this time for 12 months. During that time I broke off our engagement and petitioned the court for full custody of our kids and it was granted. We moved a couple towns away to get a fresh start and my kids are now thriving in their new schools and I have a better paying job. Now, Kate is out of jail and is living in a halfway house. She's working on getting an apartment and has told me she wants to be a part of her kids' lives again and mentioned she wants partial custody. She said she was hoping to avoid too much drama in the courts and asked for my support on it. I told her I would fight her tooth and nail to keep full custody until she can prove to me that she isn't going to mess up again. I told her I will allow her to see her kids under my supervision and on my terms until the court tells me otherwise. She gave me a sob story about how much she's changed and she would never jeopardize her relationship with her kids again, but I told her all that talk doesn't mean a thing to me because I have zero trust in her. She called me an idiot for depriving her of a relationship with her kids and I told her she did that to herself. She said I can't permanently blame her for the mistakes she's made in the past and I told her that she has a long road to gain back enough of my trust for me to even consider supporting partial custody and that until the court tells me otherwise, I am fighting for full custody. 
I'm getting a lot of grief from her family and even my family about it. They all think I should give her a chance since she's their mother, as if that somehow erases the fact that she's been gone for two years. Not the idiot. Absolutely do not relent. She's an addict and I would need to see years of being clean before I'd ever consider partial custody. She should recognize that this isn't about her, it's about the well-being of the kids. Maybe that will finally motivate her to get clean. Not the idiot. You are protecting your kids. Why anyone thinks an addict is able to be a responsible parent fresh out of rehab is bonkers. The sad truth is that addicts usually relapse. She needs a year or two of sobriety under her belt before she should be allowed in her kids' lives, and even then, it should start with supervised visitation. Recovery is hard. The first couple of years is a crap show. Not the idiot. It sounds like everything you've said is perfect and fair. You've not forbidden access to the children but you're not endangering them by allowing her unsupervised access without long established proof of responsibility. You've put their best interests and safety first. Back in February I, 17, asked my dad if we could take a weekend trip for Halloween to this haunted house event the two of us have talked about going to before. He said he wasn't sure he could afford it but if I saved enough money we could go, he was going to cover some of it too. I actually saved up the money by early September and told him as much. He then brought up the subject about how cool it would be to include his stepdaughter, 14, and it would be a nice bonding trip for all three of us. He asked me how I felt about that and I told him I didn't want to include her, I wanted it to be just the two of us. He asked why and I told him we never do stuff just the two of us anymore and I want that time with him. He said I get plenty of time with his wife. I said she's not him. That I wanted more time for him and me, not everyone together, not me and his wife or me and his stepdaughter. He told me okay it could be just us. Then his wife blabbed because he didn't tell her I had said no. Then his stepdaughter wanted to go and he told me he couldn't say no to her after that. So I told him to forget it. I bought myself some stuff with the money I had saved. This upset my dad and his wife and his stepdaughter. My dad and his wife told me I responded like a child instead of an almost adult. His stepdaughter said I was so mean, why would I do that, she was looking forward to spending the weekend with us at the haunted house. I told my dad I saved it for the two of us to go alone. But he has made it clear he doesn't want that time with just me anymore and since that's how he feels I am sick and tired of time with his family. That he shouldn't worry because I will be gone soon and he can spend all the time he wants to with them and the childish and mean one won't be living here in a few months. He asked why I couldn't just wait and do something else with him. Why spend the money? Why break the plans like that? It's not the first time I have tried to do something with him and he automatically involved everyone or just his stepdaughter in it. And I even told him I missed hanging out just him and me. It doesn't do crap. I know his wife is upset because her daughter is hurt because she knows how badly I didn't want her there and she's also not going now. Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Your dad was a serious idiot here. To me, the worst part here is that you would have been partially financing her. If they can't afford to go without you, a 17 year old with a, probably, part time job, then that is their problem. Not the idiot, you saved up your money to spend some one on one time with your dad. Your dad is trying to keep the peace in his family but should have told your stepmother that this was a trip for you guys. Navigating blended families is a hard thing. You can't invite other people on someone else's dime, especially when they specifically stated the plans were exclusive when you first bring up that you want to invite other people. I'm assuming he lives with his stepdaughter? How is it he understands the importance of bonding with and including her, but can't manage to spend one-on-one -on -one time with his own daughter? So I, 43, have a son, 10, every day I take him outside to a park, or just on our front lawn so he can get some outdoor time rather than sit in front of a screen all day. There is this kid, probably like 13 to 14, who comes by our house on his way home from the park, and for whatever reason he loves to faint throw, kick a ball at my son to make him flinch. At first, I thought it was him just being like playful or something I don't know, but as time went on I realized he was just doing it to be a jerk. I would always watch him from my window so I'd see this. I'd usually come out and look through the door and he would leave. Eventually my son got used to it, so when the kid fainted a throw or a kick at him, he just continued playing by himself in the yard and ignored it. One day I was watching from my window, and I see him just straight up throw the ball at him, I think he intentionally missed, but my son flinched and I heard him say pussy. 
I came out, picked up his ball on the lawn and drop kicked it as far as I could over some fence and went back inside. He started tearing up and went searching for his ball over the fence. I haven't seen him since, when I told my wife about this she called me a child. Yeah I guess it was a bit wrong but I don't know. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, that kid knows exactly what he's doing and he knows better. If losing his ball is enough to make him cry he should have thought of that before lobing it at a younger kid. He's a bully. He literally scares your son so he can belittle him, because somehow it's funny for this dude. If you can't behave with a ball then no ball for you. I bet after spending the afternoon looking for his ball he'll never come by to be an idiot to your son again. This kid is old enough to be aware of bullying and that it's wrong. He seems to purposely target a younger kid who isn't standing up for himself and it's your job as his father to protect him. Maybe he will think twice about getting physical with the next kid. You didn't lay hands on him, threaten him, or do anything but get rid of the problem. Not the idiot. You stood up for your kid against a bully. My only comment is that you probably should have confronted the kid before they actually threw the ball at your kid as opposed to just coming out the door and looking through the door.